recently a very large fortune corporation laid off 14,000 people the following day they talked about record breaking revenue Cerebri as an organization is there to streamline and build a lot of complicated interfaces programs solutions and softwares which people don't normally need or use on a day-to-day basis to see how we could streamline one single layer of orchestration to make the peop- life of the people better but you are using it to enhance human potential so our vision we want the ai to help people to become more successful rather than the other way around we want to bring in the ai to grow more people and help these people to grow more people and so on and so forth create a chain reaction between how ai can augment it and that's why you see it on our website we are building this layer to help people to help themselves and not saying let's let's build 10 agents and kill 100 people we don't want to do that we want to do the opposite so neil man we we've had some really good conversations uh what you're doing is crazy timely because we we've been talking about this i have my own opinion on this but i don't want to give it right now um as to what the what is the greater impact that ai is going to have on our society uh recently a very large fortune corporation laid off fourteen thousand people the following day they talked about record breaking revenue which i think a lot of people don't like they're upset it it might give them a certain perspective around ai and its impact but you are using it to enhance human potential and you think that it can work together to grow smarter and better rather than humans actually competing with the machines yeah daniel thanks uh, first of all thanks for hosting me up uh, to come directly to the question yes Cerebri as an organization, or let's say Cerebri as a vision, is there to streamline and build a lot of uh, complicated interfaces, programs, solutions, and softwares, which people don't normally need or use on a day-to-day basis to see how we could streamline one single layer of orchestration to make the life of the people better. You chasing everything, starting from being a kid, chasing your your academics, you being a teen, chasing your schools, you being an adult, chasing your jobs, you being a retiree, chasing your insurance policies. We say, let we do something to come it back to you. So that's the ecosystem. To answer your question, when we grow this ecosystem, you imagine what we are trying to do. We are creating a massive layer of data, people, and technology in the back end to make it happen. So. Our vision, we want the AI to help people to become more successful rather than the other way around. Some organizations are definitely having their own strategy. We're not against it. We respect uh, their their policies, their processes, and their uh, operating model of doing it. We want to bring in the AI to grow more people and help these people to grow more people, and so on and so forth. Create a chain reaction between how AI can augment it. And that's why you see it on our website. We are building this layer to help people to help themselves Having an agent who could be their friend and not saying, let's let's build 10 agents and kill 100 people. We don't want to do that. We want to do the opposite. And that's the whole strategy behind this whole value chain. We want to grow in an exponential way where it helps these people to become a part of a society where they can help other people and so on and so forth. It's, uh, that's the whole vision behind Cerebrate. And I've seen you say that it, this it shouldn't be fragmented. So you have work, learning, well-being. Uh, that these things should be deeply connected. How is the Cerebri integrating and bringing these things to life? It's simple. Uh, Imagine you being as a kid, uh, put yourself or put your kid in a position where what he's doing in his own ecosystem, and every day he's growing, every day something is happening. Now imagine the kid becoming uh, a post-elementary and then going to his teenage Imagine how you are connected, uh, I would say uh, right now fragmented, in how you're using everything day to day. The systems, the tools, the processes, the technology, how how are you managing it? Fully reliant on your mobile phones and having thousand apps on your mobile phones and clicking them all the day around. If I give you a platform that says we orchestrate everything that makes your life easy, 
create one single unified chain between how you use yourself as a person and what you see for yourself to grow as a kid and going through these particular layers. It helps you out when you think about me being a kid, going to a retiree and starting the whole value chain again. Ima imagine your grandfather tomorrow giving you a sirvi or a token and say, Daniel, I spend my 60 years or 50 years, whatever, on one single value chain. Take it and leverage what most of what I have and most of what I can give you back in return. Everything. It could be from commercial interests to something like professional interest. But you have everything in one single layer. And imagine the data behind this, what we are trying to do. So that's what it makes it unified. And that's what it makes it linear in what we're trying to achieve here. Simplifying everything behind you. Easy? No. Very difficult. And we decided to take this difficult route. going to take us years to make this happen, but we are already on the way. You know, I think there's this big balance of AI when it comes to compassionate, intelligence, empathy, where, but is it real empathy or does it feel fake? Is it telling us to do something that we probably shouldn't do, but does it even know if there's right or wrong? I'm so torn when it comes to a lot of these things around AI. And I think maybe more of the compassion side, just because it's like, if you teach AI to do something bad, does it know what's bad or what's good? How do you see all of this being built into the technologies, not even just what you're working on, just technologies going forward in the future? See, it's very simple. You know the answer, Daniel. It's how we train it. AI in the back end is a set of data that talks to the data and creates these what, what we are calling LLMs, NLMs, NLUs, RAGs. There are too many terminologies behind this and we can go deep into technical stack. But then it's how you tame it, like the way you I think that you tame your, your dog or your pet and how, how it responds back to you. Uh, you could tame it good, you could tame it bad. What we are trying to do is we are trying to tame it in a way that is becoming your friend and your uh, support system tomorrow that makes you learn and grow. And as I, as, I, as I keep on saying, making this, this as a common denominator for a numerator of all these things that come on the top. Your denominator is this friend who's going to look around you and say, Daniel, tomorrow, yesterday night, you didn't have a good sleep and you didn't have a good sleep from the last five days. I see this is a problem. Do we need to talk to a therapist, which I can connect now, or shall I offer you a medicine? This is the intelligence the AI should bring it to you. So it, it kills a lot of processes in between rather than you thinking, what should I do next? As an example, right? So this is what we are trying to do here. Now, uh, how it makes, how we make it learn to do that is all about the backend data, technology, and the processes that we are building right now. So this is one example. Now look at examples all across, hovering around you. When you travel today, Ima, I would say when I have to travel, I have to, I have to juggle seven systems to really go to my flight. I have to really call people to book, book me a car. Why can't a system tell you, Daniel, you travel to Philippines every second week? I know the flight you take, I know the hotel you stay, I know the car you rent, let me replicate it because I know the data. Is it easy? No, we'll take time to make it happen, but this will happen. This is the future. So now you ask yourself, is AI going to replace you? No, AI is going to augment you because you take him like a handle, like a briefcase with you, traditionally called as concierge, expedited support systems or whatever we call it. It's your concierge with you, to make things happen automatically that you shouldn't be spending time in the next few years doing manually. That's what you're trying to do. I like, I want to have a concierge. I like that. I like the idea of the concierge. I would imagine if we, if we took out every single thing that we do every day, we probably work on patterns, right? Like you said, everything we're doing is probably some sort of pattern that can, if we had the data that could easily be replicatable or somebody could, could, be able to tell us what's going on, see things before it's happening. We had we had somebody on before who was building a health system that was going to to work more on the preventative medicine side um, to tell you if something might be happening before it before you know it happens. Um, so I'm excited about AI. But what do you see? All the things that you're saying. What's the biggest challenges in creating these systems that will truly understand humans? and specifically will understand us. Uh, imagine when you have to uh, teach your kid the first A letter and to pronounce it properly and to make it understand what it means in, in the mind and in the, in the back of the head to really say, am I correlating a letter or am, am I entering a world of euphoria? That's the difference. 
We are creating euphoria. We are not creating a learning pattern. We are saying you learn the best out of it. And I'll be honest with you, the, the systems in the back end, the technology, the AI that we have built, the foundation layer is starting with empathy. It's not asking you, how are you doing today? It's telling you, what can I help you with that makes you better for that particular day? It's reading your mood. It's reading your sentiment. It's reading how you're feeling to be able to work a particular day. And it's saying, Daniel, you're not feeling well today. Don't work today. You're not going to be productive. So it's about the learning and the training that we are doing. We are a traditional uh, three decades of data on emotional intelligence that we have brought now with the amazing partnership that we have. And we are using this as a foundation as well to see how we can make things on top. So make it more empathetic, make it more natural. Don't make it feel like you're asking an airline system to book a ticket. No, we are trying to solve a fundamental problem here. Uh, the rest comes on top. So take one example. We, have, we are building a very unique autism uh, AI. Uh, the data says more than 8 million people suffering from autism, the kids who cannot be the part of the society. I mean, it's pity. If you, if you ask those guys, the parents and the caregivers to how they get help, they spend days to even reach out to a caregiver who's spending half an hour with them. It's, it's crazy. So we are building an, an integrated AI system, bringing all these caregivers and the therapists on the platform and training the AI in a way that says, hey, parent, your kid is going to be in a shock. Do one, two, three, four to make it happen and see the videos around there. We are also getting some help from ChatGPT, for example. We are integrating it to make it much better because that's, the, that's where the learning comes. But then it's a cognitive ecosystem that brings all of them together. And that's why calls are something as, as unique. So this is uh, to your example, Daniel, doing something for humanity. Not, not, we're not selling AI, to be honest with you. We're not selling software. We're not selling licenses. We're not doing that. We are selling a vision for people to know what Cerebri can do to make their lives better. That's the whole idea. Yeah, I have a friend right off, right off the top of my head. I know that um, she could definitely use this uh, for her son. And what, when you look at five, let's say 10 years from now, when you, when you think about how our lives will be in 10 years from now, I keep seeing, you know, as of next year, you can buy a humanoid for $20,000 or $15,000. You can have it in your house to help with different things. And that's only 2026. In 10 years from now, how do you think our lives will be when you mix in the AI, you mix in uh, humanoids, possibility, uh, they, they're they saying that we'll have quantum computing. Like how will our, will we even live on this planet? I don't know, will we be on Mars? How is our life going to be in 10 years from now? I've not really thought so far of the 10 years because I tell you every day we are learning and growing and, and uh, maturing so much that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, our roadmap has changed 12 times in the last four weeks because every day we are learning something new and try to integrate it. We, have, we are talking to partnerships, major, I cannot say the names, big partnerships, big collaterals, big organizations, universities, schools, artisan companies uh, to bring all in together. What do I say, say in 10 years if I have to ask me? Make your life as simple and as automated as possible. I, I don't think so. You, you should be even touching the dishwasher. Let it do it on its own. Will it be able to pick the dishes from your table and place it in the dishwasher? I don't know. Maybe a humanoid is there picking your utensils and putting it. I don't want to make you sound lazy as well so that you have an AI doing everything. See, uh, fundamentally, every day that you're trying to do, you imagine if you create a notebook of struggles of day in, this notebook becomes a book in one year. You have struggles everywhere, starting from the example of being sick, having a car, having an insurance policy, having a hospital, talking to the doctor. Take your daily life, how you manage it. Then the kids. Then the adults, I mean, multiply the ecosystem problems. We want to solve it. We want to simplify it. Should the retirees really go and spend time on the call uh, discussing their insurance and the retirement plan? No. They should have a system that tells them, this is what you will happen to you in the next 60 years if you do this. And let's make your life better. Do these guys have access to all the doctors, the therapies, the medicals, the pharmaceuticals? No. Let it come to you. Let, let the agent know you're sick and let me send you paracetamol because it knows you don't have one. This is what I see very near. 10 years, I don't know yet, to be honest with you. But, but drastically, not AI dependent, but AI augmented with people. Let them be your friend in a, in a society or in a colony that work and stay in the same ecosystem. You coexist. You don't, you don't take them over. That's the vision. Well, you know what, Sunil? I hope that I, I still know you in 10 years because I could say, 
I knew that trillionaire. I knew him before he was a trillionaire. I'm really interested in how we are seeing corporations really take on this. Like you said, you're working on a lot of partnerships and people seem to be to be very aware that there's a lot of opportunities because we can solve so many problems. As an entrepreneur though, the the amazing thing is the amount of problems you can solve. However, I get caught up, Sunil, trying to solve a million. It, it's like I have ADHD. Like I solve one problem and then the other problem, then the other problem, because I could just vibe code, you know, 15 different softwares. The issue is I don't continue the one because I'm on to the next one. How do you, what suggestion do you have to other entrepreneurs who I think might be in the same boat as me, where we're seeing, we're seeing the ability to solve so many problems, but, it, but it's almost like we get caught up trying to solve all of them. It's a very simple saying. Uh, the difference between insanity and in genius is measured by success. I would say focus is the key. You need to, you need, first question you need to ask yourself is what you're trying to solve and who you, who's going to get help out of this. Uh, there is so much around that. And I would say you, you Google any one company today who's not doing AI. Just, just Google. Everyone is doing an AI. And we, we feel so proud about it that they're thinking in the right way. Is it going in the right direction for the people to really get help out of it? I mean, no. If you look at uh, even today booking the hotels or, or booking the, uh, your, your flight ticket, has something changed drastically with the, with the AI? I would say no. It's still the same. Can we make it better? Yes. How we can augment this, that's where Cerebri comes in. How we can augment it with our AI solutions and how we can make it better, that's the whole uh, theory. For entrepreneurs, I would say, focus, resilience, and vision. Those are the three things we need to really say what we are trying to do, when we are trying to do, and what, what is the outcome behind this. What, what are the basic problems that we are trying to solve? Are we creating one more AI company with a chatbot? No. That's not Cerebri. Uh, we could do the chat GPT. We want to build something that helps human to be successful in their lives from a kid to an elderly. That's all about cerebrating and well-being. If you're not well, you are nothing. That's a foundation. Health is wealth. Yeah. I mean, if, if we're not healthy, then what's the point? You could have a trillion dollars, but if you are laying in bed and you can't do anything because you're not healthy, then what is the point? It's not worth it. Um, no, it's, not, it's not worth it. Right. Yes. I, I love that. Yeah. I think we're happy, we're healthier, we're living a better life, we're simplifying things. We don't have to do the tasks that we really don't want to, mundane tasks. Then we can focus on other things like spending time with our family, traveling, doing the things that we love in life, which I think will make us live longer, be happier. It makes total sense. Um, but Sunil, if people want to get in touch with you, they want to find out more about what you're doing, how can they do so? Just reach out to hello at cerebri.com and we will answer all your questions. Well, Sunil, CEO of Cerebri, thank you for joining us, man. I really, I'm really excited to see the future. And I love talking to people like yourself who are, who are building the future and the optimism and all the things that you can solve. I, I am really, it, it feels so good to be in my 40s in 2026, 2025, because I feel like I have a lot more life that I can live to experience all the great things that are going to come about from technology. And so thank you, Sunil, for joining us today on Founder Story. Thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. Have a nice day.